I'm Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Buddhist teachings as taught by the 13th century Japanese sage Nichiren Shonen. The word Nichiren means sun lotus and Shonen means priest. And the way that we teach and practice Buddhism is through following the Gold Show. The Gold Show are letters that Nichiren Shonen wrote to his disciples to teach them Buddhism and we strictly follow the Gold Show. Now, we have an exciting lecture for you today. This lecture is called That the Essence of Buddhism is the Lord of Sutra. When speaking of the Buddhist religion, Nitra reveals to us that the ultimate teachings is only the Lotus Sutra. Nitra writes in the Ghost Show on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime, quote, If you wish to free yourself from the sufferings of birth and death you have endured since time without beginning, and attained without fail unsurpassed enlightenment in this lifetime, you must perceive the mystic truth that is originally inherent in all living beings. This truth is Myoho Renge Kyo. Chanting Myoho Renge Kyo will therefore enable you to grasp the mystic truth in a in all life. Unquote. Please be clear. What Nitra asks us to do is perceive the mystic truth that is originally inherent in all living beings. The most important thing that you must grasp is as Nitra teach. The truth is Myoho Renge Kyo. Now, a truth of science is a universal law. There is no prejudice in regards to a universal law. A law works equal for all beings, and there is no group of person who owns a universal law. Please understand that the essence of Buddhism is the Lord of Sutra. When speaking of the Buddhist religion, Nitra reveals to us that the ultimate teachings is only the Lord of Sutra. The Lord of Sutra is the king of sutras, true and correct in both word and and principle. Its words are the ultimate reality and this reality is the mystic law of Myoho. It is called the mystic law because it reveals the principle of the mutuality inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. That is why this sutra is the wisdom of all Buddhas." Unquote. Now, let us bring Buddhism to a 21st century perspective. The Lono Sutra reveals, quote, it reveals the principle of the mutually inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. The Lotus Sutra teach us that all phenomena is a part of the universal law of causality, a causality. In common sense terms, no man is an island. We are all mutually inclusive. In a simplified way, you eat plants and plants eat you. When you cease to exist, 
your body or the elements of your body emerge back into the environment. All of the elements that make us or make you become a part of the environment based on the law of causality. Whether my Republican lawmakers believe it or not, fossil fuels affect our environment and cause global warming. This is how Nitrin further explains this in the Go Show on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime, which reads, quote, Life at each moment encompasses the body and mind and the self and the environment of all sentient beings in the ten worlds, as well as all insentient beings in the 3,000 realms, including plants, sky, earth, and even the minutest particles of dust. Life at each moment permeates the entire realm of phenomena and is revealed in all phenomena. Again, let us bring Buddhism or the Lotus Sutra to a 21st century perspective. When we look out into space with the Hubble telescope, we see phenomenon of stars being born, dying, and activities in space. Nietzsche calls this life, or life at each moment permeates the entire realm are phenomena and is revealed in all phenomena. The Lord of Sutra teaches us that life is revealed in all phenomena. In a short and simple explanation, all life is revealed as the law of cause and effect or the simultaneousness of the law of cause and effect or this is what we call Yo ho renge kyo. Now, I have studied Buddhism since 1970. Nichiren is very, very, very clear. He says, if you think the law is outside yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but in an inferior teaching. Inferior teaching means those other than this Lotus Sutra, which are all expedient and provisional. No expedient or provisional teaching leads directly to enlightenment, and without a direct path to enlightenment, you cannot attain Buddhahood even if you practice lifetime after lifetime in the ghost show on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime. Quote, you must never think that any of the 80,000 sacred teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha's lifetime or any of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions in the Three Existences are outside yourself. See, Buddhism is you, ladies and gentlemen. He goes on further. Your practice of Buddhist teachings will not relieve you of sufferings of birth and death in the least unless you perceive, unless you perceive the true nature of your life. If you seek enlightenment outside yourself, then you're performing even 10,000 practices and 10,000 good deeds will be in vain. It is like the case of a poor man who spends night and day counting his neighbor's wealth, but gains not even half a coin. That is why Tentai School's commentary states, quote, unless one perceives the nature of one's life, one cannot eradicate one, one's 
grave offenses. This passage implies that unless one perceives the nature of one's life, one's practice will become an endless painful austerity. Therefore, such students of Buddhism are condemned as non-Buddhists. Great concentration and insight states that although they study Buddhism, their views are no different from those of non-Buddhists. Unquote. Nichiren writes, quote, the Lotus Sutra is the king of sutras, true and correct in both word and principle. Its words are the ultimate reality, and the reality is the mystic law, Myoho. It is called the mystic law because it reveals the principle of the mutuality inclusive relationship of a single moment of life and all phenomena. That is why this sutra is the wisdom of all Buddhas. Please understand that in regards to Buddhism, Nichiren Shona teaches us that the Lotus Sutra is everything. Now, in the Go Show, the real aspect of the Gohansan it reads, quote, how wondrous it is that around 200 years and more into the latter day of the law, I was the first to reveal as the better of propagation of the Lotus Sutra, this great Mandela that even those such as Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu Tintan and Milo were unable to express this Mandela is in no way my invention. It is the object of the devotion that depicts Shakyamuni Buddha, the world honored one seated in the treasure tower of many treasures Buddha, and the Buddhas who were Shakyamunis in my nations as perfectly as print matches its woodblock. Uncle! Nietzsche explained that the Gohanzan is a mandala or a banner of propagation of the Lotus Sutra that is called a Gohanzan. Ultimately, the Lotus Sutra is everything. Now, this is Gohansan. Here, the black object. This object of worship is a banner of propagation, the Lotus Sutra. And this is also called the treasure tower, or the seven types of jewels, or the seven kinds of jewels. Let's kind of go over the jewels of why this Gohanzan is called the treasure tower. Now, the first treasure is, number one, hearing the correct teachings. Hearing the correct teachings is number one. The next treasure is believing the correct teachings. That's number two. Number three is keeping the precepts. Now, this means having a moral code. Be it just being a decent person, having a moral code. That means keeping the precepts. Now, number four treasure is engaging in meditation. Now, so that you would understand, ladies and gentlemen, chanting Nam Nyo Yo Horenge Kyo is meditating. The way that we practice Buddhism, we don't sit back and meditate to clear our mind, but we chant Nam Nyo Horenge Kyo or Nam Nyo Horenge Kyo. That is meditating. 
That is the fourth one. Now, the fifth one is practicing assiduously. Now, when we who recite this book, the Lotus Sutra, we recite this, that's called gongyo, or practicing assiduously. That is one of the fifth jewel. Now, the sixth one is one of the most difficult, but it's called renouncing attachments. Now, what that means is that we cease to be attached to things, whether it's a car, whether it's a mate, whether it's a house, we begin to not to be so attached to things, whether it's fame, whether it's sex, or what have you, but it means putting a little balance in your life, not being attached. That is the sixth treasure. And the seventh treasure is two, one of the most important, and that is when you chant Nong Mu Yoho Renge Kyo to the Gohanzan, you reflect upon oneself. You can see yourself and you can clean yourself up. So, what you will find is that the seven treasures of the Gohanzan actually means yourself. That means you are dealing with yourself. You are not looking outside of yourself. So it does not take an organization, it does not take a big priest, it does not take a leader, it does not take anybody outside of yourself, but you come in front of your altar, in your place of worship, and you chant, and you will be adorned with the seven kinds of treasures. Now, the way that the Nichiren explains this, he explains it this way, and again, this is in the Go Show on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime. And Nixon explains it this way. He says, quote, If the minds of living beings are impure, their land is also impure. But if the minds are pure, so is their land. There are not two lands, pure or impure, in themselves. The difference lies solely in the good or evil of our minds. It is the same with the Buddha and an ordinary being. When deluded, one is called an ordinary being, but when enlightened, one is called a Buddha. This is similar to a tarnished mirror that will shine like a jewel when polished. A mind clouded by illusions of innate darkness of life is like a tarnished mirror, but when polished, it is sure to become like a clear mirror reflecting the essential nature of phenomena and the true aspect of reality. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, when you clear yourself, polish yourself, clean yourself up, make yourself be the best that you can be, you transform yourself to an enlightened individual. This has nothing to do with whether a person is black or white or Japanese or a priest. But Buddhism is a practice where we learn to clean ourselves up and this is not outside yourself. Now, this is how I believe many people are getting jived when it comes to Buddhism and reaching the state that we call enlightenment. See, we have this idea of the enlightened superhumans who have perceived to have reached an unreachable state of enlightenment, when you read the writings of Nichiren Shonen, he does not explain enlightenment 
as being some almost superhuman feat. But this is how Nitrin explains enlightenment. And he puts it in a very simple way. He says, it is the same with a Buddha and an ordinary being. When deluded, one is called an ordinary being. But when enlightened, one is called a Buddha. This is similar to a tarnished mirror that will shine like a jewel when polished. A mind now clouded by illusions of innate darkness of life is like a tarnished mirror. But when polished, it is sure to become like a clear mirror reflecting the essential nature of phenomena and the true aspect of reality. Arouse deep faith and diligently polish your mirror day and night. How should we polish it? Only by chanting Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. So, you see ladies and gentlemen, to be a Buddha, you don't have to look at outside yourself. You come to yourself, to your altar, and you practice, and you get to know self. And you polish yourself. You look at yourself. Now, the one thing as an African American that I am 100% confident of and I have yet to see or read about one single Japanese committed to the black community as much as the people who live in the community. So, you see ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to look outside of yourself. You don't have to go to no meeting and sing no sensei and worship another human being. But you or being a Buddha means coming to yourself, coming to your own community and helping to build yourself and your community and your people up. In concluding the letter on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime, Nichiren breaks down the meaning of Yo Ho Min Ge Kyo in a very simple and understandable way. Nichiren writes, quote, what does Myo signify? It's simply the mysterious nature of our life from moment to moment, which the mind cannot comprehend or words express. When we look into our own mind at any moment, we perceive neither color nor form to verify that it exists. Yet, we still cannot say it does not exist, for many different thoughts continually occur. The mind cannot be considered to either exist or not to exist. Life is indeed an elusive reality that transcends both the words and concepts of existence and non-existence. It is neither existence nor non-existence, yet exhibits the quality of both. It is the mystic entity of the middle way that is the ultimate reality. Myo is the name given to the mystic nature of life and whole to its manifestation. Newton writes, quote, unless one, he says one, perceives the nature of what? One's life. Again, he says, one cannot eradicate one's great offenses. This passage implies that unless one's perceived nature of life, one's practice will become an endless, painful austerity. Therefore, 
such students of Buddhism are condemned as non-Buddhists. And Nietzsche goes on further. He says, great concentration and insight states that although they study Buddhism, their views are no different from those of non-Buddhists. Unquote. See, it is Nietzsche and Shonen who encourages you to be an individual and do your individual practice. Let us show people how great Buddhism is and that we believe in freedom, justice, and equality for everybody. Let's become an enlightened person. I think you got it. We have gave you a in-depth lecture. I am Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Thank you very much.